time, that aged nurse rocked me to patience. This is a quote from John Keats, widely regarded as one of the greatest poets of all time. Now, did I come to this conclusion myself? Continue on and we'll find out. Welcome, Mere Mortals, to another Mere Mortals book review. The book reviews that will help transcend you beyond mere mortality. Today, I have the book for you, Selected Poems by John Keats. So who was John Keats? Well, he was an English poet born in 1795, and this dude had a rough life. He was an orphan by the age of 15, as both of his parents had passed away, and he himself died of tuberculosis at the very young age of 25. During his lifetime, he was not recognized and was even critically attacked by a many number of his peers. He was a romanticist poet, so his poems centered around many of the themes that you would expect when you conjure up the word romantic, youth, beauty, art, love, mythology, but also some of the darker themes such as sorrow, heartbreak, and suffering. And from his own life, he knew quite a lot about them. Now, the book I have here is a selected poems from him. So there was about 50 in this book, and I believe in total through his lifetime, he wrote about 150. So we're getting about a third of, I guess, his best poems. I normally like to talk about the themes of the book, but in this case, I'm gonna to have to do something a bit different because his poems and the themes around them just cover so many different topics that there was nothing I could really pick out in particular. So I wanna talk a little bit about this style. So to talk about his style, I suppose we need to start off with the length of some of his poems. And he could vary quite widely. So he would have some which were 20 lines, less than 20 lines, such as an ode to sleep, psych, or to Mrs. Reynolds' cat. And then these thousand plus line epics, which are reminiscent of J.R. Tolkien and that sort of Lord of the Rings type, very continuous dialogue moving throughout. And these are ones such as Endermine, a poetic ram romance, Hyperion and Lamia. And then there's everything in between, which could range from a couple of hundred lines, which are, you know, maybe a couple of pages. And then these other epic ones, which are quite longer, but not at that same level. Now, this is the only work of John Keats that I've actually read before. So I can't say for sure, but he seems to be mostly a rhyming poet. So his rhyming pattern would usually go in the style of ABAB or AABB. And then even sometimes you could find the ABC, ABC style. Um, and these would just continue out until the end where he would maybe sometimes switch it up right at the end of the poem for the last two lines. I would describe his essence as, I suppose, flowery and very idealistic. So as we mentioned before, most of the themes are centered around love, the connection between two romantic lovers engaged in this twisting series of events, or even just being out in nature. So he would be in these winding dark paths going through the forest, the birds chirping, the leaves, everything, the describing every single sense and smell that could come from that. So onto my personal observations. Funnily enough, my personal favorites weren't, I guess, what you would call the standard or the typical well-renowned poems from John Keats. These aren't the best of the best that you'll find in the lists on Google and whatnot. Why this is, I'm not exactly sure, but for example, two or three posies, which is a very short, sharp, limerickly driven, almost like a nursery rhyme designed for kids. Absolutely love that. The Fall of Hyperion, which is this epic mythology regarding the, the Titans and their fall from grace in the Greek type style. And then also Isabella or the Pot of Basil, which is a very heartbroken, tragic story of a, of a lady who pines for her, her long lost dead lover. I should mention this is my first real try of poetry. So in this area, I'm definitely an uneducated buffoon, but I did really enjoy just his style, his prose and working through it as a whole and, and not needing to read the book in, in this huge one manner, purposeful driven way, which is typical of me. I also found it quite interesting how the English language would change quite dramatically. And I'm not sure if this is him just altering words to make them seem like they rhymed. For example, he would rhyme fly with philosophy or philosophy. And there was many instances in the book where I was reading a word and I'd come across it and it would, it would feel like the pattern has been broken because I would read it in standard everyday English for us. And I would have to treat the word differently and change the ending of it to make it rhyme and then continue that pattern onwards. So onto my summary of the book. I surprisingly quite enjoyed these. I really wasn't expecting to, this being my first venture into the poetry and fictional poetry at that, but I'm really glad I, I read this book. 
it's everything one would imagine from a romantic poet. So he has these states, these excitements of grand exaltation of love of flowery emotions. And then it switches as well into these abysmal dejected misery and suffering that one can experience. I personally wasn't swept away with the emotions. I wasn't dragged down into this current of whirlpool feelings and everything like that, but I did gain a greater appreciation for the art. So I'm giving the book a solid six and a half out of 10 for the selected poems of John Keats. Something I'm taking away from this book and actually would recommend to others that if I'm reading poetry in the future, there's two things I would do. One is to read it out loud. And I think this just breaks up the flow. So you're actually reading it in this, in the, I suppose the sense that it would be heard because it's so very easy to just read it as a text and go dun, 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 and then not really utilize that rhyming pattern, which actually what is constitutes the style of the, of the poetry. The other one I would say is, is not to read it in the sense of a non-fictional book or a book where you're trying to get information because it takes away from, I guess, the joy from it. I personally was reading maybe like 10, 15 minutes in the evening here and there, just little bits and pieces. And I think the poetry style where it stops and starts and you can read these things in, you know, it, some of them only take 30 seconds to read. It, it lends itself to not needing dedicated study time. You can just chill out and enjoy it. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my review of the selected poems of John Keats and if there's any poetry lovers out there, please let me know if I've missed anything or if you have any personal favorites, I would love to, to go over them. And just a little call to action for everyone who's watching. If you could leave a like, if you could subscribe, that would mean the world to me. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Karen out.